Good morning, comic community. I've got some lovely things to show you today. Before I uh, get stuck in, coffee must come first. Right, I'm going to show you a bit of a mixture today. Um, again, five comics um, bought from various places. I think for the first one, I got it from um, 30th Century Comics, and the other. Two I got for my trip in Birmingham. Um, another one after that I got from the big box. And the last one I got from eBay. So yeah, all over the place. All over the place. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, couldn't get a video out yesterday. Far too busy. Um, and today is going to be similar. A uh, bit of sunshine out there, but it's, it is raining at the moment. But no, today my chore is getting a greenhouse disassembled and re-erected in another place. Because my other lovely half is getting a new greenhouse. And um, yeah, she wants another one for a long time. But that has nothing to do with comics. So, here we go. This one was the 30th century comics purchase um, not too bad it is a number one it is one of the ones I was telling you about the other week this is Fantastic Tales number one and I paid the princely sum of £18 for it which I think is pretty good for a number one now the thing with the Fantastic Tales run uh, is that beautiful comics but personally, um, the, the front covers, they are, should we call it, rudimentary. Um, I don't hold them in the same esteem as I do Alan Glass, but they're still very nice to have. Uh, this particular one is a Thorpe and Porter, as you can tell by the TP, in the little box there. So yeah, very, very out there colours, very garish. But very nice, and I do love them. It sounds like I don't like them, but I do, they're great. You know, very similar to Alan Class. And uh, a lot of people do get them mixed up if they miss that TP box. Very similar, similar size, black and white insides. Um, but firmly stuck in the atomic age, the atom age stories inside. Uh, I don't believe, at least I've not come across uh, a Marvel story inside. But beautiful in its own way, in its own way indeed. So that's Fantastic Tales number one. I think a worthwhile purchase at £18. Moving on to, now this is the one from the big box, I believe. And it kind of got me interested in Fantastic Tales. This is Fantastic Tales number two with a lovely flying saucer for Elsa. Wonderful commentator, subscriber to this channel. You know, that, that is, is perfect. Now, as this one isn't in Mylar, I can give you a quick show through of, of some of the pages here. Where shall I start? Without bending the book too much. There you go. Distributed by Thorpe and Porter. Published by... Come on, come on, come on, come on. If you see it down there. This is what I mentioned the other week. Published by Top Sellers. And that's the kind of thing you'd see in Marvel. Where um, they were published by... Although it was a Marvel title, they were published by Cadence Industries. In the early 60s. Same thing with these guys. Thorpe and Porter comic, published by Top Sellers. I've got to be very, very careful with this, as the pages are starting to come apart. But your typical black and white. And lovely sort of out of space stories. It's actually great artwork. Find something 
See if my fingers can flip through a typical sort of spaceship sort of 1950s style. Lovely, quite fragile. Um, so I am going to very carefully put that back. Yes, quite quite fragile indeed, as you see from the top. It actually looks um, like it's a cutting production error. Is the words I'm looking for? Ripped and torn at the top. And uh, no, folks, it's not rodent in the bulls. I can't imagine a rodent would take issue with just one book and leave all the rest of that big box alone. But you can see that it's sort of like torn, it's not being cut properly. Very nice though. And I must have I've not seen a number two of Fantastic Tales anywhere else. But, uh, you know, look at that. Look at that spaceship. Look at that flying saucer. Beautiful. And that's the two fantastic tales I'm going to show you this week. The next one comes from. Pretty sure it was the big box again, I think. It's Astounding Stories number 55. The very glossy cover still. The nightmarish return of the skull. From the darkest and most mysterious reaches of time and space unfolds one of the strangest and most unbelievable fighters of crime, Mr. Justice. Very nice, very, very nice. A very quick flick through. See if I can find any of those hidden gems for you. You know, you've got a typical Jack Kirby Dick Ayres story in here. For one of their monster titles. The man in the, what is that? In the crazy maze? Just about to see it, Kirby Ayres. But any superhero stories? Probably not. I don't think. But nice to have that old Kirby Ayers um, story in there. As soon as I, um, you know, spot Kirby art, my jaw always hits the floor. Always will, I guess. Nah, but that's it though. No, you just got that one fantastic, probably Atlas, not Marvel, of course. The Man in the Crazy Maze. Beautiful, beautiful. Moving on to... Did I get this in the big box? Or was it the eBay one? I can't remember. Can't remember. This is Amazing Stories of Suspense, number 102. Pawn of the Ultrafoes. Unusual name for, for a supervillain, the Gloater. But again, that's the shield. Something about this book kind of is tapping on my head that this is this is quite a, a hard find to find, number 102. Not sure why, but I think it has something to do with the shield. Yeah, that's repeated. Stranger in the Storm, which was a number one issue of another Alan Class title. I'd like to say Uncanny Tales, but I, I could be wrong. But definitely a number one issue. They feature that panel on the front. Wow. 
such incredible detailed art. Yep, beautiful. Yeah, but something's knocking on my head that this is quite a hard, hard issue to find. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, and I got this off eBay just the other day. Um, this is one of Mar Marvel, excuse me. This is one of Alan Class's oddities. Where Alan Class only published two issues. Um, this, uh, I didn't know at the time, but apparently it's the harder one of the two issues to find. Uh, this is a no number, but most people call this number one. This is Amazing Stories. Beautiful cover. Uh, the, the only issue I see with it is a, a little bit of spine wear. A little bit of edge wear on that spine, actually. And that's it, it's beautiful. Kirby, probably Rip Kirby. A little man, unimportant, unknown, but when he sleeps, he does more than dream. Come with him into the worlds of Kirby. Saw it, wanted it, bid for it, got it. Luckily me. Beautiful. So it's the only word I can really just describe, you know, comics like this. Really, really nice. Really, really nice. So, my dear friends, on that note, I am going to have to face this wet weather and start disassembling. Not looking forward to it. I cannot tell a lie. So, on that note, um, hopefully by next week, and you know, after today, I won't be water soaked, drenched through with a heavy cold, because that's going to happen, I'm sure. And I shall see you next week, and I hope everybody has a great weekend and a great week going forward, as I always like to say. And I hope you've enjoyed these five mishmash of uh, comic covers I've brought you today. Some lovely, fantastic tales. A couple of, I'm sorry, awesome, astounding stories. Ah, an amazing stories of suspense, which is tickling the back of my head. <coughs> Excuse me. And that amazing stories. Very nice. Very nice indeed. So... Whatever you do, keep reading those comics, and I shall see you next week. Bye for now.